it up some fiberglass work. Um, the panel's back off the car because I'm going to do some more work on it. We'll talk about that when I get around to it. Um, this week's probably going to be a focus on wiring and possibly dust collection. I want to build a dust collection system so that I can start doing my fiberglass work back inside. Uh, if I get to that this week, we'll talk about it when I get there. But for now, I want to focus on wiring. Um, the first thing I've done already is upgraded the connector on my trickle charger. I was using these uh, weather pack connections, which are nice industrial waterproof connections. Uh, but twice I've gotten in the car and drove off and forgot to unplug it. And so it just tears those up. It rips the plugs out. It leaves them with a positive and a negative uh, just dangling right beside each other. So uh, I got an inline fuse, but, or I need an inline fuse. I've got one I'm going to put in because I realized that was an issue. But uh, the trickle charger is only 1.2 amps, so you don't need a big connection. So I found these nice little uh, barrel connections on Amazon. I got like 10 of them for 10 bucks or something. And they just slide in and out. So if I drive off without unplugging it, it's not a big deal. It'll just slide right out. Plug it back in when I get back. Uh, the next thing I'm fixing to, to do a little research on is my blinkers. So when I turn either blinker on, they both come on. It seems like that's probably related to how I tried to wire up the flashers. Um, but I'm not positive, so I'm fixing to get the multimeter out and start testing that. And then once I get done with that, uh, I'm going to move on to tail lights, brake lights, reverse lights, try and get all that wired back here so that when I do put the tail panel back on, I've got lights. Uh, the other thing I've got going on is I ordered exhaust. That should be here in the next day or two. That'll probably, at least the initial mock-up, might make it into this video. I ordered a much smaller catalytic converter and a 17-inch muffler. So we'll, uh, we'll see where we can get. I'm going to take a look at the flasher wiring first. was 100% my problem when I uh, disconnected these two wires right here which were connected to the parking light switch which I'm going to repurpose for a hazard light switch uh, my blinker stopped blinking together so what I'm getting ready to do is install two diodes and what diodes do is they act as a check valve for electricity so signal can come in one end and pass through but it can't come in the other end so ground will be able to pass from the switch to either blinker but not from one blinker over to the other and without those two diodes there then that signal would be able to always pass through and that was the problem I was having so I'm going to uh, get that installed and that should fix that problem <music> Turns out that wasn't the issue because I've got that uh, switch disconnected at the moment and my battery wires are, or my uh, left and right blinker are still grounded together. So I can do some more digging. Maybe it's in the Arduino. So I'm out of time for tonight. I'll have to try it again tomorrow. And continue to work on why both my blinkers are blinking at the same time. But I've got some exhaust stuff showed up on my doorstep. And so I thought I'd like to go ahead and start mocking that up a little bit so that uh, if I don't have everything I need, if I get to mocking it up and realize I need an extra bin or an extra uh, segment of pipe or a completely different component, I'll be able to order that and hopefully get it here before the weekend. So what I've got at the moment is a new catalytic converter. It's a high flow cat. I don't particularly care about being high flow, but I do care about it being smaller than this factory one 
Uh, although I guess maybe it's not that much smaller than the factory one, but the factory one on all the attached piping, it's definitely smaller than that. Another thing I got is a muffler that should be here imminently, but it's not here yet. It's 17 inches long, so this is going to serve as our muffler until the muffler actually gets here. Um, and so I got to figure out exactly how I want to route the exhaust. Um, I really want a center mount exhaust because those look really cool. Um, but a lot of people on the 8184 arms have said that the way the aerodynamics of the 818 work, it pulls the exhaust fumes back into the car if you do a center exit and it smells real bad. Now, I don't know if I'll have that issue because I'm going to be building the target top, but certainly a possibility I will. Um, might be something I'd be willing to live with. I don't know. Uh, I'm fixing to, to get this stuff here and start mocking up and see if I've even got room to put a center mount exhaust. Um, so I'm not too sure exactly where it's going to go yet. It's either going to go like right here, right beside the um, transmission. Or if I can't do it center mount, I will probably just go ahead and bring it out the side because that's been verified to not cause any issues with an exhaust smell in the cabin. So, uh, yeah, we'll so I'll get the camera out and uh, try and do a time lapse as I mock things up. Alright, I got the cat off. I believe that's a stock Subaru piece. And then this here is a uh, piece that comes from Factory 5, I'm pretty sure. Um, like I said, I bought this car, started, that allows you to uh, bolt the cat up directly to the turbo, and then it gives it a little bit of angle. I may wind up using that, I may not. Just got to figure out uh, exactly how I want my stuff to mount up. So, let's get started on that. So after some thinking, um, I'm definitely going to take this piece out and I'm going to cut that nice TIG welded piece on. That piece that's TIG welded on, I'm going to cut off and I'll replace it with this 45 right here and I can bring the cat down right through here and then from there. I've got two options. I barely got 17 inches, which is how big my muffler's supposed to be to bring it out the back. If I decide not to do that, I can throw this 90 on the end of it and kick it out the side. So um, my muffler's supposed to be here in a couple of hours. Uh, I won't weld anything permanent or even tack it until it gets here. But I imagine that getting this piece separated ain't going to be the quickest thing. So. Uh, I'll go ahead and get started on that, trying to get this cut off and separated. That was surprisingly easier than I thought. I just uh, cut it with the uh, reciprocating saw, the sawzall, then took the cut off blade and trimmed it up and then ground off what was left of the weld. And the uh, old piece of tube popped right out, I threw it in the trash. And uh, the new one slips right inside there. So as soon as I get my muffler, I can decide exactly what angle I want it at and tack it. these diodes yesterday and it turns out it was because I didn't understand how to check them so what I was trying to do was test for continuity because this switch goes to ground and so what I wanted to do was put my multimeter over there on the ground bar and then put it 
here on the output of the switch, right here, and see ground, which I could do. But then I wanted to see ground here and here on the other side of the diodes so that I would know that that ground signal was going to flow through and trigger the uh, flashers. And I also wanted to, if I turned the blinker on, see ground on the other side of it, which I did, but not see ground on this side of it. Um, so it turns out you can't measure continuity through a diode. You have to measure flow. You actually have to have a flow difference. So if you want to check diodes that are on the ground, what you have to do is put your red lead of your multimeter on a positive and then come over here and see if you get 12 volts or I've got 14 volts because I got a charger hooked up. See if you get 14 volts on one side, but not the other to make sure it's working. And so it is working now. I've just got to permanently wire this up and I'll know that this piece is working. And then I've got to get back here and figure out why the Arduino blinker interface is doing something funny that now I'll go over in a minute when I get to that. <laughs> diodes in on the blinker and the flasher and now all that works so the problem now is that has no it's the blah, blah, blah. that wire which takes the right blinker over to Arduino has no continuity to that wire which takes the left blinker over or right whatever left and right over to the Arduino they've got no continuity together they've got no continuity with these two wires which are tap directly into the blinker wires. If I connect either one of these, there's no continuity, but if I connect all four of those connectors together, I've got continuity, and it's blowing my mind. So I'm gonna trace those wires back here to the Arduino and see what's going on. But first I'm gonna go see if my muffler's here. So the, uh, the issue with my blinkers is definitely coming from the Arduino. The Arduino, I have set up to be negative triggers, which means ground triggers. And um, every one of them is outputting five volts. They pick up the signals just fine. Um, so I'm guessing it's probably operating the way it's supposed to, and I don't understand how a pull-up input works on an Arduino so it's time to go hit the old internet and see what I can find out oh is exactly how loud is it with just an open turbo and not even a cat and then also I want to just kind of push my new cat on there and see how loud it is compared to the factory cat so uh, let's just turn it on and find out I got the GoPro going over here it'll decimal meter on my phone will uh, we'll measure the decimals of it with uh, with no cat and with the high flow cat and see what we get so we're at about 50 decibels just standing here and when I talk it jumps up to about 75 maybe 80 so that's where we are right here at the camera basically before we crank the car up.
far as how it compares to the factory one I don't have it out so that I can hook it up but it's definitely louder probably about 10 decibels louder would be my guess all right so my conclusion is the catalytic converter doesn't lock knock a lot of noise out um, a little bit but not a lot it's still loud even with the cat on there but it sounds so much better with the cat without the catalytic converter on there you just hear a lot of whistling and rattling of uh rattling rattling of engine noise that you don't hear so the cat really in my opinion makes it sound a lot better um and so definitely gonna have a catalytic converter and a muffler on there um since my muffler gets here, I don't think it's coming. I'm starting to get sad. It's kind of like Christmas and Santa Claus didn't come because it said my muffler was going to be delivered today and it hasn't been. So maybe I'll get a muffler tomorrow. I guess for now I'm going to go research what's going on with the Arduino and why it's putting six volts out on my digital lens. All right, Christmas was a day late. I finally have a muffler. And uh, boy, that sucker's heavy. Kind of got everything right where I want it. It'll actually sit a little higher than that, obviously, but that's about where it should do. It should stick out about that far past the uh, frame, which means it'll be pretty much even with the, the back of the bumper, and I will uh, put a little tip on it. So um, I'm not going to weld anything today because I don't want to get the welding machine out. I'm off tomorrow, so I'll do that tomorrow. What I want to do today is get everything marked and cut so tomorrow all i gotta do is weld it and then uh I think about powder coating it i should be able to powder coat it with no issues do a little research i don't think there's an issue with powder coating a catalytic converter or a muffler they both see temperatures higher than 400 degrees uh, as part of their daily use so um yeah i'm going to try and get everything cut today and uh go ahead and get the paint off of the muffler it's real cheap paint it's scratching off just marking it up of mocking it up so get everything cleaned off and ready for welding tomorrow i hope I've spent the last little bit of time thinking about is how I'm going to get that trimmed properly because I don't have really any room for error there. So <clears throat> that's a 45 coming out of the flange. If the turbo is 90 degrees or perpendicular to the ground, then that catalytic converter should be at a 45 degree angle so we are going to measure it with a digital angle finder we're going to turn it on and we're going to zero it right there on the ground well, let me hold it flat while i zero it there we go is it zero and we're going to put it on the cat there and it says that i am at 36 degrees 45 would be way up here so it says that that cat is at 36 degrees which means that maybe I'm not exactly on my 45 there Let's see if that helps that only got me to 37 I mean 45 is a big change from where I'm at so I'm just gonna have to live with being at 36 degrees there The other question is, what angle does this need to be at? Itch to get it mostly parallel to the ground is about 21 degrees, 21 and a half. So, I'm going to go do some math and see what angle that needs to be at and then uh 
Trying to figure out what I'm going to do from there. So my exhaust is two and a half inch. I couldn't find any point. Couldn't find any two and a half inch tube. I've got this, which is two and a half ID. And this, which is two inch OD. So I'm going to do some testing with this in the miter box just to see uh, how the cuts line up on the, the tube. I've never cut tube on an angle. I've only cut square things on an angle. Um, and then from there I'm going to, the theory is once I figure out exactly what angles I need to be, I'll be able to cut them using this since neither my cat nor my muffler will fit in a miter box. And then I'll be able to slip this over it, mark it, and I'll have a line to cut by. So it turns out cutting pipe on a miter is just the same as cutting wood on a miter. Uh, the angles work out. The problem I have is that the miter box I picked up only does 45, 90, and 45. And I need something around a 22 or maybe even an 18. So uh, it's not going to work for me to use the miter box. I'm going to have to do math. Oh, God haven't done geometry in 20 something years. So, um, 22 years, I think, since I took geometry. Used to be really good at it. So, um, I should be able to measure uh, my outside length and my inside length and uh, use that to draw a straight line. So, uh, I'm gonna start by cutting. No, I'm gonna go do some math and then I'll see. bought a 45 but I don't know for sure that I'm square here and here so I'm sitting at 49 degrees so to get back to zero I should need a 41 I actually think I need a 46 because 41 plus 49 is 90 but I'm already tipped down five degrees. So I need a 36, I believe here, which kind of makes sense because this is sitting at 36. So if that was at a 36, it would put it back to zero. So I need a 36, which is two 18s, two eight, because I need 36 total. So I need 18 degrees on each side. So now I gotta do the math on a two and a half inch pipe how long the outside edge versus the inside edge needs to be to get an 18 degree. my brain instead of just being a little lemming and moving along I'd have realized that an 18 degree ma angle makes no sense that's a obtuse angle excuse me an acute angle and I know for a fact that I need an obtuse angle so my math was clearly wrong uh, I probably don't need an 18 I probably need 90 minus 18 which is 72 Probably need a 72 degree angle. So uh, yeah, I'm gonna go see what that gets me.
So once I figured out that I needed the inverse of a 18, which is a 72, um, the problem no longer became the math and it became the accuracy. It's really hard to freehand cut angles on tube because you're looking straight down at it and you're trying to get this outer edge here and this outer edge here is your measurement. It's really hard. I even, you know, like on this one, I ran two rings of tape and tried to cut exactly between the two rings of tape and I still missed. So what I wound up doing was making my own miter box that I could put any angle I want on. I need to, to mark what angle I just built on this, cutting this, because I might want it again in the future. But using a uh, caliper, I was able, and a uh, speed square, I was able to mark perfectly straight line on both sides, measure how far I needed to move, mark another perfectly straight line, and then cut my angle. And now I can't do it and hold the camera and all that. But when I hold that up there, just like that, and I use the digital angle finder, that angle right there is 36 degrees, which is exactly what the catalytic converter is at. So that's what I need. Um, I now have to find a way to get this onto that because that ain't gonna fit in here. So, um, and I thought I would cut it on this and then slide this over it, but it doesn't quite fit. No, it doesn't. I think what it is, is this right here is designed to fit over two and a half inch exhaust, which means it's slightly bigger than two and a half on the outside. And this is two and a half on the inside. So um, I'm not sure what I'm gonna do because I could go pick up some two and a half inch exhaust pipe but it would slide down inside there and I wouldn't be able to see it to make any marks. So what I really need is some two and three quarter ID pipe and I don't have a clue where I could get two and three quarter ID pipe. They certainly didn't have any at the Home Depot. So um, yeah, I may see if I can make some out of cardboard. Doesn't have to be super thick because it's gonna be supported around that. So uh, let's go see what I can come up with. So I couldn't find anything that was a perfect size to fit over the exhaust pipe. What I did have was a piece of three inch tube, cardboard tube that, uh, it's got my old address on it. I haven't lived there in 10 years. Um, so I've had this thing a long time, but it was just a little big, dropped over, wiggled around a little bit. So I took it and I split it. I cut a section of it and then I split it I put it down on there, held it tight, and taped it so that I now have a perfect template for the outside of that pipe. So now I should be able to take that, put it in here, cut it at the proper angle, and then slide it up on here, mark it with tape here, and then I can cut around the line or mark it with marker or whatever I want to mark it with. I won't be able to actually use the miter to cut it, but I'll have a nice line. I can use the um, can use the reciprocating saw or the cutoff blade on the grinder or a Dremel, whatever I want. I'll have a line to cut off of. So I'm gonna get it marked and cut. Okay, well, there it is cut and kind of held together loosely in my hand. And if I were to put that up there, it's really hard to see, but that's the proper angle. So uh, this piece, I actually get used to mark this one right like that and then uh, this piece I'll have to mark the muffler so uh, get them marked and get them cut
I got all the paint off of the muffler. That took about 30 minutes with a wire wheel. Um, and then I cleaned up the mating surfaces with the, the uh, disc sander so that they were a little flatter since I free, had to freehand cut them. Uh, there's still some tiny gaps, but nothing I shouldn't be able to add a little filler to. So uh, now i got to clean up the shop and get everything ready for welding. So we'll get on that and uh, be back in a little bit. Continues to frustrate me no matter how many times I do it. Um, I grabbed the piece that I cut off of the cat and kind of dialed in my amperage so that I was getting a good puddle without blowing through. And then as soon as I came over here to tack the muffler to the cat, I blew a big hole in it. I don't know. Um, the other issue I've got is that I did freehand cut these cuts on the cat and the muffler because they wouldn't fit in the uh, jig. And man, they they aren't close at all. There, I got a lot of fill to do here. Um, I'll be able to do it, but it'll be ugly. There won't be no stack of dimes here, that's for sure. I can barely do a stack of dimes on a flat piece of metal. But uh, it doesn't have to be pretty. You're, it's going to be hidden. You'll never see this, so uh, it just has to be leak proof. Um, so everything's tacked. I got two tacks here two tacks here and two tacks there and I put it up on the car and uh, everything lines up where I want it so I'm gonna finish weld all of this after lunch uh, and then the last thing I'm gonna do is come back and make a little mount that I weld to the bottom that will uh, bolt to the chassis to keep it from flopping around <laughs> how much uh, of the welding the camera missed because I moved the table because my uh, cords weren't long enough and I uh, forgot to move the camera so um, yeah hopefully it got most of it but uh, I'm not a welder so I don't know all the welder jokes but uh, I'm sure somebody would tell me that I only know how to do butt welds because they're all butt ugly um, the this one was hard for me because at times there was a gap where um, I didn't have this clocked it exactly perfect and it's a slip fit and so there were times when I was having to close up a gap uh, a vertical gap here and then this one was real difficult because there were a lot of horizontal gaps where I didn't get those miters perfectly straight this one was actually the easiest one from a, a fitment standpoint, but it had a real thick piece welded into a thin piece. So uh, it, it's on there, it's not coming off, it's not gonna leak, but it's really ugly. Um, I don't know if I'm gonna try and clean the welds up or not. Uh, there's some pretty tight areas to try and clean up in, so I'm probably gonna leave it alone. Uh, I'm just gonna let this cool for a little bit, and then uh, I'm gonna put it on the car and see how it sounds. I'm really excited to see how it sounds with the muffler on it. And, uh, welding a piece on here and drilling a hole down like I'd originally intended to do um, because when I was trying to come in from the side I'd intended to use a grommet but the problem is it's hard to find a grommet thick enough for that um, and, and also um, as I started tightening that thing it was twisting that way more than I'd anticipated so it bro brought it much much more over these uh, the frame here so um, I actually don't have a bolt in it right now because it tightened that way much more than I thought it would. And so I need about a sixteenth of an inch. I just have to drill that hole out. Um, 
which I will do when I take this off to, to coat it. I had intended to powder coat it today before I put it on, and then I realized that I'm a doofus, that uh, regular powder coat won't hold up on a muffler or a cat. It'll melt right off. Uh, I got to order some high temp powder coat or some ceramic coating. Still doing a little research, haven't made a decision yet. Um, it's all stainless, so I don't have to paint it. I could leave it like it is, with the exception of the uh, brace I made there. That's mild steel. I could always, that won't get hot though. I could paint that with some engine paint or an in, engine enamel or whatever, and it would be fine. And I could leave this raw stainless. And I may end up doing that because it's all going to be hidden by the time I get the back on and the trunk in. All you'll really be able to see is about that much of my butt welts so um not sure exactly i'm still doing some research but at some point i'll pull it off and drill that hole out so i can pull that down so i'm excited to see how it sounds um i was never a fan of the the wide open exhaust with just the cat so uh i'm fixing to open the garage door roll the car out get the gopro set up uh where it was the other day when we tested the uh engine uh with uh no uh, anything on it, just an open turbo, and uh, we'll measure the decibels and see how many decibels it changed, and also just see in general how it sounds. Interesting, 96 decibels, it says it's louder than it was the other day, but it sure sounds quieter. And it sounds a lot better in my opinion, it's got a lot more mellow tone to it. Not as raspy and metallic, and maybe that's why it doesn't sound as loud, even though it's actually a little louder. Good place to call it an episode got the exhaust on figured some stuff out with the blinkers and the arduino interface um, next thing up is probably going to be the dust collection systems that i can get back on body work uh, but i'll put all that in a separate video so uh, thanks a lot for watching guys and uh, see you next week